Summary of the House of the Spirits by Isabel Allende. Clara del Valle, who is 10 years old, writes in her notebook, Barabbas came to us by sea. She writes down everything that happens, no matter how big or small, but she has no way of knowing that her notes will be used in the future to reclaim the past and overcome terrors. Clara's dad, Severo, wants to be in politics, and Clara's mom, V, wants her husband to be successful so she can fight for women's rights from the inside. Clara has mental powers, which her family tries to keep a secret. She can read auras and predict disasters, move the salt shaker across the table without touching it, and talk to ghosts. One day, two men show up with a box, and Nana, the servant in charge of the children, runs into the house to tell Nvi that her brother Marcos has died overseas of a strange disease. Nvi and the kids, especially Clara, are very sad. However, Barabas, an unidentified type of puppy, is one of Marcos's personal belongings, and Clara falls in love with him right away. Rosa, Clara's sister, is engaged to Esteban Truba, who has been working in the northern mines for the past two years. Esteban is deeply in love with Rosa, and he writes her countless emails. Soon, Severo's Liberal Party political goals pay off, and he runs for Congress to represent a province in the South. As a gift from the Southern votes, they send a roasted pig and a decanter of the best whiskey. In a few days, the pig is gone, and Clara says that someone in the family will die by mistake. Rosa gets a fever the next day, so Dr. Cuevas, the family doctor, gives her sweet lemonade with a splash of liquor. Rosa's grandmother gives her some alcohol, which she drinks and then goes to bed. Rosa is dead when Nana wakes up in the morning. Severo was supposed to drink the whiskey, which had rat poison in it. There were rumors that the Conservative Party sent the whiskey to Severo as punishment for him joining the Liberal Party, even though he had a high social standing. However, this was never proven. Only that the whiskey did not come from the Southern votes is known for sure. Esteban Truba, who comes back from the mines, is just as sad as the rest of the Del Valle family. Clara stops talking and stays quiet for many years because she is sad. Esteban decides not to return to the mine and goes instead to Trace Maria's, his family's run-down estate. When Esteban arrives, the farm is in ruins, and a peasant named Pedro Segundo Garca has been acting as an unpaid foreman. Esteban starts right away to fix up the main house, build new barns, and plant crops in the fields. Esteban laughs at the idea of class struggle when he is in charge of the peasants. He thinks the villagers would be lost without a strong patron like him to lead them. Esteban builds a schoolhouse, a general store, and even brick houses for the people, which is unheard of on other farms. He works for a long time and starts to feel bored and worried. Esteban thinks he needs a woman, so he rapes a girl from the countryside named Pancha Garka. After that, he is so busy working and robbing other village women that he doesn't notice Pancha is pregnant until it's too late. Esteban doesn't believe the women who say that Esteban is the father of their children. He does think that Pancha's son is his, but he still won't admit that he is any bastard offspring. Esteban goes to a local brothel and meets a prostitute named Transito Soto. He does this to avoid getting into trouble like this in the future. She wants to make her dreams come true, so she asks Esteban to lend her 50 pesos. Esteban doesn't know what she will do with the money, but he is fond of Transito, so he gives it to her. In the meantime, Esteban gets a letter from his sister, Farala, saying that their mother, DOA Esther, is dying and wants to see him. Esteban doesn't really love his mother, but he goes back home anyway. When he gets there, DOA Esther begs him to find a good wife and have kids who will carry on his name. As DOA Esther passes away, Esteban goes to the Del Valle home and asks Severo if he has any children who are available. Severo says Clara is the only daughter left, and she won't talk and sees ghosts. Esteban wants to meet her because he likes quiet and isn't afraid of ghosts. Clara tells Esteban that she has been waiting for him ever since she could talk again. Esteban falls in love with Clara so much that he proposes to her at a fancy party, where Barabbas is strangely stabbed and dies in Clara's lap. 
Severo and V worry that the death of the dog is a bad sign, but they are still making plans for their wedding. Esteban, who is now rich, starts building a home, which quickly becomes known as the big house on the corner. Clara asks Farala to move in with them. After their vacation, when they arrive at the house for the first time, Clara faints when she sees Esteban has made Barabbas made into a rug. I told you she wouldn't like it, Farala tells Esteban. Soon, Clara is going to be a mother, and Esteban will have to go back to Trace Maras. Without him, Farala and Clara get into a good pattern and become very close. Farala does nothing but take care of Clara, and she doesn't like Esteban or the way he makes the house feel more like a man's place. Clara talks to her future child, who she already knows is a girl and has named Blanca, all the time. After Blanca is born, Farala is so busy taking care of Clara and the baby that she doesn't have much time to hate Esteban. Clara and Esteban decide to spend the summers at Trace Maras when Blanca is still a child. There, Blanca plays with Pedro Segundo's son, Pedro Tercero. Clara writes in her notebook that helping Trace Mara is her mission in life, and she starts telling the people about her mother's ideas about equality. Esteban is angry and claims he won't accept a suffragette wife preaching nonsense, but she pays little attention and continues her talks with the peasants. Clara gets pregnant again, which Farala takes as a personal blow. They go back to the big house on the block, where Clara gives birth to twin boys, Jamie and Nicholas. Esteban goes to the Christopher Columbus, a neighborhood brothel, the night Clara gives birth. He is surprised to find Transito Soto there. Esteban says he would rather have her do him a favor than pay back the 50 pesos. Nana moves into the big house on the corner to help Farala with the kids. Three local students of spiritualism, the Mora sisters, are attracted to Clara and the house. Even though Esteban doesn't like it, the women move in. He doesn't say anything, though, because he loves his wife. In the meantime, Esteban gets tired of Clara and Farala being so close, so he kicks Farala out of the house. Clara tries to figure out where Farala is, but she can't find her. In the meantime, more students of spiritualism move into the house, and Clara spends her days talking to ghosts and floating furniture. Over time, the Trubas continue to spend the summers at Trace Maras, where Blanca falls in love with Pedro Tercero. Esteban hates Pedro Tercero, who plays a guitar and sings songs of change, but Blanca sneaks out her window every night to meet him. Jean de Sadigny, a Frenchman, comes to stay at Trace Maras, and he sees Blanca right away. When Blanca sneaks out to meet Pedro Tercero, he follows her and finds the two of them making out by the river. Jean goes straight to Esteban. Esteban jumps on his horse and rides halfway home to meet Blanca. But at the Riffe. Clara and Blanca go back to the big house on the block, and Clara never talks to Esteban again. Soon, it's clear that Blanca is pregnant, so Esteban makes her marry Jean de Sadigny to keep the people from finding out. Their marriage doesn't last long, though, because Blanca leaves Jean when she finds out that he likes to take pictures of their male workers without clothes on. Blanca goes back home to Clara, and Jamie, who is learning to be a doctor, gives birth to Alba, Blanca's daughter. Alba grows up in the house, which is full of magic from Clara and love from Esteban. Esteban doesn't like his own children very much, but he loves Alba very much. Blanca takes Alba to meet a famous singer on the radio one day. Pedro Tercero is the man's name, but Blanca doesn't tell Alba that he is her father. Clara dies on Alba's seventh birthday, which is a terrible time for the whole family, especially Esteban, who stays sad for the rest of his life. Clara's death makes the big house on the block worse, and Esteban's relationship with his family keeps getting worse. He even sends Nicholas away, telling him to never come back. Nicholas's only interest is Clara's spiritualism. Esteban's friends try to cheer him up by taking him to a nearby brothel, where he is again surprised to see Transito Soto. She is now in charge of the house, which she runs as a group. Everyone is happy, she says, and no one is abused. When Alba is 18, she falls in love with Miguel, a law student and protest leader at the university who is a vocal socialist and a law student. 
Alba supports Miguel's cause. After spending days at a protest, she meets Colonel Esteban Garca, a former peasant from Trace Maras and Esteban Truba's actual grandson. Esteban Garca sexually abused Alba more than once when they were kids. In the weeks that follow, the socialist candidate is chosen as president of the republic, and political unrest spreads across their split country. Senator of the Republic Esteban Truba and the other right politicians are planning a military coup d'etat to take over the government and get rid of Marxism for good. But when the military takes over, they kill the president, stop lawmakers from meeting, and refuse to give up power. Early on in the coup, Jamie is killed, and Miguel leaves to fight with the guerrillas. Blanca hides Pedro Tercero, who is on the list of people the new government is looking for, in the house. Esteban, who is still upset about Jamie's death, helps Blanca and Pedro leave the country. Alba follows Blanca's example and starts keeping wanted rebels in the house until she can help them get out of the country. Esteban has no idea about this, nor does he know that the police are watching their house. Alba is caught in the middle of the night and taken blindfolded to a place she doesn't know where she is questioned by a man whose voice she quickly recognizes as Esteban Garca's. He asks her about Miguel, and when she refuses to talk, she is beaten, abused, and raped. After a few weeks, Esteban goes to see Transito Soto after getting three of Alba's fingers in the mail. Miguel helps Esteban look for Alba and advises that Esteban talk to Transito, who works in the same field and knows a lot of important people. After two days, she finds Alba and makes plans to get her back home. Esteban and Alba fix up the crumbling big house on the block, and Esteban suggests they write this story. When Esteban is done talking, he goes to Clara's bed and dies happy and without pain. When he dies, Clara's spirit shows up, smiling and laughing like she did when she was at her best. Now, Alba is expecting a baby girl, but she doesn't know who the father is. What matters is that the child is her daughter. Alba also knows it's important to write down her experiences in her own notebook so that others can learn from her story. Alba writes, Barabbas came to us by sea. About the author. Isabel Allende Lona was born in Lima, Peru, to Francisca Lona Bars and Tomas Allende, who was the second secretary at the Chilean embassy. Allende's parents got a divorce after her father left the family in 1945 and she and her mother and brothers went to Santiago, Chile, to live with her maternal grandparents. Allende's grandma was interested in spiritualism, which can be seen in the House of the Spirits. Allende also had free access to her grandmother's large library, which made her want to read, especially Shakespeare, for the rest of her life. Allende's mother remarried a Chilean official, and the family moved a lot. Allende went to private schools in both Bolivia and Beirut, Lebanon. In 1962, Allende married and had two children in Chile, where she finished school. She worked for the UN in Chile and Europe until 1965. On the side, she translated English romance books into Spanish. During this time, Allende also worked as an editor, a writer, and even wrote and released two stories for children. Salvador Allende, who was the son of Allende's father's cousin, was named Chile's first socialist president in 1970. In 1973, he was overthrown by the military in a coup d'etat. It is said that President Allende killed himself during the coup, but it is more likely that he was killed by the resistance. Allende helped people who had been banned by the new government leave the country, like the character Alba in the House of the Spirits. This put Allende on the list of people who were wanted by the government. She ran away and went to Venezuela, where she and her family lived for 13 years. During this time, Allende wrote and released The House of the Spirits in 1982. Both critics and readers loved the book, which was originally written in Spanish. Allende wrote many stories and non-fiction books over the next few years, such as Eva Luna in 1987 and Paula in 1994. She has won many awards and honors, including the Hispanic Heritage Award in Literature in 1996, the Chilean National Prize for Literature in 2010, and the United States Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2014. Allende and her husband, Roger Kukras, live in California. She is thought to be the most read Spanish language author in the world. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. 
please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.